Hey, welcome, welcome. <laughs> the proud, the few. Um, so it's really quite exciting. So I, um, one of the real big surprises of this conference is the amount of training going on. Um, there's something like 3,000 people who are going to go through training, different trainings and all the rest of it. Um, and I'm sure you've all kind of seen what that training looks like. It's, it's usually somebody standing up there and, you know, kind of talking. And so there's a good reason why we're all sitting down here um, to kind of explain the way that this, uh, this can work. So let me get into it. Um, my, my name is uh, David Flanders. Uh, everybody calls me Flanders, thanks to some television show, uh, which you might have seen. Um, and basically, my job at the foundation is to uh, help build out the application developer community and you know, try to do the best we can. And this is a really important initiative for us because obviously, um, the OpenStack group has, uh, the OpenStack community has really been operators and contributors and uh, we believe our users are application developers, but there's, there's not a ton of application developers wandering the halls here. So uh, this is a, a really big important initiative to start bringing more application developers, our so-called users, into the fold. Um, so we'll definitely get some feedback here. In fact, I am going to pass around the mic because uh, uh, I'll let you guys say where you're from and what you're doing because uh, th th this will matter eventually. Chris. Uh, okay, Stefano. Yeah. Um, Stefano Mafulli, I work at Dreamost, um, director of community, and uh, one of the objective of my group is to inspire and instruct our customers. Excellent. Brett Kugler, GDT. I'm the software architect for GDT Labs. Um, we do all sorts of engagements with customers and also internal trainings. I'm Bruno Morel from Internap, so I'm the Software Development Director, so I manage the software team that contributes to uh, OpenStack, and uh, I currently am the future uh, uh, author of the iOS firmware. I'm, I'm Leon, I'm from Intel, Senior Software Cloud Architect, so I have a mixed background in application development as well as infrastructure provisioning. My name is Caleb Boylan, and I work under Steph at DreamHost uh, as the customer advocate intern. My name is Christopher Ado. I work for IBM. I'm a PTL also of the Community App Catalog Project. So my objective or agenda here is uh, overall to help continue to build the ecosystem of application developers for OpenStack, which also really, for me, I want to be really part of this. So I speak to more developers and figure out what their needs are and even see how developers define an OpenStack application and how they think about packaging and distributing applications. Excellent, cool. All right, so um, you guys can stop me at any time and we'll have a conversation about this. I definitely want feedback. You know, this is early days. So as we grow this thing from summit to summit, um, and I'm, I am expecting it to take, you know, a year, two years before we really kind of get this thing up and going powerfully. So. Let's start at the itch and the scratch. Start by scratching a developer's personal itch, Cathedral and Bazaar. So as I've wandered around the hallways here and we've started to have all these conversations around application development, as I've said, everybody has opinion on the way people should use the infrastructure and the way they should build apps and all the rest of it. And rather than try to dictate how that should be done, I really want this to be a forum, a place where we can start to allow multiple people to come and to actually provide um, a place where they can push forward their own agenda and then most importantly share that agenda so that we can start telling people how we want to get them to work. And in addition to that, I don't want it to just be training where you have one person standing up there and doing Simon Says and hacking on the command line and saying this is the way the world should work. That's not good learning and actually science tells us otherwise. Um, the other big part of this is, is we've often fallen back to docs always being the key solution. And for me, the key phrase I keep using in this is prevention is better than a cure, right? If we go ahead and preempt them and show them the way we want them to use this, then we've got a lot better chance of actually getting application developers not complaining and our users not being angry at us when the docs aren't a good thing. So you need both, absolutely, but I really feel like good communities, if you look at other application developer communities, it's, it's having both training and docs. So any, any, any additional itches anybody has on this that they really want to share, things that we really could, we could fix and solve if we're going to engage application developers? No? We're in agreement? The flame wars. The flame wars. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. 
and yeah, and look, that that's that's part of it. And let's come back. Let's come back around to that. So the scratch. Um, so I've been involved in a couple of different communities, and I'll go into this. But there is good ways to actually do training nowadays. And there's a reason why you're all sitting around here, and that we're recording this is because. Um, this is much more real to what it is like to build an application, right? You need a group of people who, you know, you need your DevOps, your sysadmin, your, your um, product manager, your usability expert. This is much more like what it actually looks like to build an application. Um, and so I really want the training to follow best practice in the science of learning. And there's some really good research on this, coincidentally, and it goes back quite a way. It goes back all the way to 1780 and Robert Reichs when he first, he actually had the exact same problem. He would, there was a 1780, uh, obviously, the Bible and the church was really powerful, except there was a big problem with regards to the commoners can't understand the Bible. It's too difficult to understand. And so Robert Reichs actually proposed Sunday school. So he's the inventor of Sunday school, and he said, look, we just need to lower the bar, and we need to find a good set of ways, metaphors and analogies and key principles to teach people so that they can understand this really complex thing called the Bible. So I'm not saying OpenStack is the Bible, but <laughs> it is complex. <laughs> um, okay. So... Today, what this, where we're going to be doing in this little group is, um, these are the learning objectives. Um, so we're going to talk about how to set up this learning space. Um, uh, we're using this metaphor of a code dojo, though Bruno, yesterday we had a really good talk. Um, there's this new initiative out there everybody's talking about called mob programming, which is an iteration of pair programming. We'll come back to that. But for the time being, I'm going to stick with the metaphor of a, an app dojo or a code dojo. We're going to talk about how to assign learning roles. Again, like I said, you know, app developer teams are going to have usability and product managers and all these different roles, why you need to assign those roles and how that works well in this training forum. We're going to talk about how to facilitate training um, as a sensei, and I'm using sensei very specifically here because it's not good to be a teacher where you're standing up and just chalking and talking and boring people to death. That's, that's not a good way for us to retain community members, you know, and we, we have a massive spike every summit in people coming to these events, and then they don't, you know, they don't stick around long term. Um, or at least, you know, not the majority of them, or about half, actually. Um, finally, craft learning challenges. So uh, you can stick with the metaphor that's called kata in terms of martial arts for varying skill levels. It actually also applies to Japanese tea as well as um, Japanese uh, theater. Uh, and then finally, share your learning challenges with the wider community. So, you know, it's open source, so there's a good way we should be able to sh share the way that we're training and teaching people in these things. Okay, so let's actually get into this a little bit. So the dojo, precedent. So what are we building on here? Um, I'm not just making this up. This has been around for a while now. Uh, coding dojos originated in Paris um, in the early 2000, in early 2000. There is a big foundation called the Coding Dojo Academy, which took that metaphor and actually is using it to train kids, um, very much the Sunday school of coding, if you will. Um, so good, good way to learn is if, if you can teach kids, you can usually teach uh, app developers um, and DevOps for that matter. Um, a <laughs> We'll see, indeed. Um, one of the things I really like about this community is it's about building diversity. Um, and, it, it, you know, having kids, their community is actually uh, great diversity. Re you know, more, more um, women than men, uh, girls than boys participating in that community, uh, uh, let alone, you know, uh, just trying to pull in different uh, uh, communities all over uh, the place. The other big precedent in this is weekly quiz listservs. Um, if you guys have ever been in the Pearl or Ruby communities, they're really big on this. Every fortnight or every week, they actually publish a quiz. Uh, there's even a, a Ruby quiz book now that you can buy. And so that's something I'd really like for OpenStack, is just to see a bunch of quizzes shared around where people, because we all know that you know, there's no one way to do these things. There's, you know, a dozen different ways. So a good challenge will uh, instruct people to be like, oh, there's a dozen different ways. Let's talk about the ways we can do these things. So it's a good way to learn. And then finally, um, there's really good practice to be built into this. Uh, again, and Bruno probably could say more of this because I know your team uses it, but uh, mob programming. Um, you know, there's, a, there's a, a growing body of literature. I was Googling it and reading a bunch of articles this morning, and it's, it's really interesting because there's even a mob programming conference now and stuff like that. So the latest in Zeitgeist, but um, nonetheless, I do think it's about core things. So the theory is really around pedagogy, um, and there's actually a really good body of evidence around this, uh, what's called the science of learning pedagogy. Problem-based learning, they've done massive surveys on the way people actually learn. They learn much better when you put them in, you give problems. 
uh, and the same with participatory learning. Um, it works much better when people work in teams. But let's get down to the practicals. So this is kind of what a code dojo looks like, or um, mob coding. Um, I'll break each one of these down uh, as we go through it, and hopefully everybody will ask me questions because uh, it is a little bit confusing at first. Don't worry, we will come back to this slide time and time again. But there's an overview. Um, let me dive in. That's, that's kind of the deep dive, XKCD style cartoon here. Um, Cloud App Dojos um, can take any form. Uh, so even though I'm kind of showing you, you know, here's what the typical form looks like, which is the same room, the same laptop, the, the, the same keyboard, the same problem that a group of people are solving, that's kind of what it's all about. Um, it can take any form. So there's no reason why you can't create a good learning challenge and use it uh, in a chalk and talk presentation where you have voting and multiple choice, uh, command line, Simon Says Stuff, certification training. Uh, riddle evenings, brown bag lunch, quiz hours, pre-conference game nights, and I've seen these at Python conferences and, and all kinds of things. They become really fun once you have a, a good repository of learning challenges. Um, and so again, just the essence of all of this is about riddles, games, role play, um, creating that. Instead of us having slide decks and saying, you should use my slide deck to train people on this, all we need to do is be able to say, here's the cool quiz. And eventually, once we build up an, a large enough repository of challenges, um, I think we'll very much be able to start to provide certified training. You know, we could very much think about app developer certified training. So that's, that's kind of the long-term goal in the two to three year sense. Okay, so roles. First is the sensei. So. Um, what, what this look, and again, the reason why we say sensei is because we really need people to not be the teacher. It's not about getting the glory and standing up and having the spotlight on you. Uh, it's actually about you, the learners, uh, learning all of this. So uh, we'll come back to this time and time again, but um, I can't express enough that, uh, in fact, Bruno, I think you've got some a nice instructional challenge piece of paper you showed me yesterday. And it's as easy as you taking that piece of paper and setting it on the table like a Lego building block instructions and saying, here you go, here's the instructions, go for it, raise your hand if you need me, and then you can literally go off and just kind of sit in the corner and do your thing. So it actually becomes the easiest way to do training. I'm sure you've all spent hours on PowerPoint slides or something like that, and that's not actually the best way to teach people. It actually, the best way to teach people is to prepare a nice set of quizzes and challenges. So again, that's what the sensei or the Yoda person does. They will state the problem, whether it's on a piece of paper and they set down the instructions, or normally there's a whiteboard up on the side of the wall and we'd write, okay, here's the problem, here's what you should try to solve. Um, normally those problems take the form of uh, a, a, a basic one, so you try to choose a really simple one. Uh, you then have a, a more intermediate one and then an advanced one. Um, and so the group then has to solve that problem, and the sensei, the Yoda, kind of stays in the shadows and, you know, asks questions more than they give answers. Yes, Chris. You might get to this later, but I'm wondering, is there, a, like, required reading or homework that people are expected to do before this? Because I'm just wondering, in this scenario, how do you set the levels properly? Because already I've experienced uh, here, and at every summit, in fact, when I think I'm talking to an audience of people who know what OpenStack is, I've literally had a room full of people who say, but what is OpenStack? Could you explain that first? Yep, you're spot on. Um, absolutely, you could add in pre-readings, though I find people tend not to do yeah. them when yeah. I do it. Yeah. Um, what I will show you is that what I'm really talking about is one of the cool advantages of doing training in this format is you know, this, this room will hold 100 people. So actually what we could do is we could have you know, all of this, small groups like this, seven to eight people in parallel all around the room, and you could be training them all, because what you're doing is you're saying, okay, here's for the novices. Here's for the first time you're using OpenStack, here are a bunch of REST curl commands to be able to understand the services. You guys go off and solve that one, then you walk to the next table, and you say, okay, you're intermediate. You guys are ready to, you know, launch a VM and put your application up on it. Here's your, here's your challenge. And then that way, you really have a much more effective way of um, paralyzing, do, doing the training in parallel. So this is really borrowing from our own community, right? We're all about parallel computing and ma making our lives easier and spreading the job. So, um, and it is, it's just, it's just a lot more effective because what you'll have naturally is people will then start to kind of take over just like you and I are starting to have a conversation in this little space that engages everybody. You know, everybody's, you know, actually paying attention rather than on their laptops doing emails right now and it's because it's in a small group setting. Okay, let me push on quickly. So the other big part pair of this is the pair programming. I don't need to tell you all what pair programming is. 
Um, but basically, if you do have new people, a really easy way to explain it is the brain and the hands. So I would be sitting here typing on the command line, and Chris, as my brain, would be telling me what to do. So my job is to actually learn the thing in my hands, the kinesthetic in int intelligence, if you will. Uh, Chris's job is to ask all of you questions and to be like, guys, what do you think? What do, what do we need to type? And then that way, I don't have to think. I can just focus on the syntax and actually learn the syntax. So, you know, the first rule of a code dojo is everyone must fight or everyone must, you know, actually put their hands on the keys and feel the code. And again, that's a really great way to make people pay attention to the syntax and learn what they're doing. Um, and it's also really important that you repeat this stuff over and over again, right? Because when you send commands in, you get errors thrown all the time. So if you don't do it three or four times, you're not gonna know that that's an error or what, what a robust error code looks like. So there's a big part of just, you know, the maneuvers, you know, doing a maneuver over and over again, even though you know the basics of doing a, a defensive maneuver, a defensive programming, or writing a test, doesn't mean that it's always gonna work. So it's, it's a great way to, to reproduce it. So again, uh, just like we're sitting here, so Stefano um, could be my, my brain and I could be the hands here. And so his job would be to be talking to everybody and asking me what I'm doing. So he'd be the one saying, can I please get some help suggestions from the audience? And then making the decision, I guess kind of the product manager and asking questions. Yeah, I think there's also a lot of value in um, looking at other people's code. So even in a small group like this, as you shift around and people people will implement things differently, right? And that integration piece, that reading back, seeing what happened, that's extremely valuable in, in the learning exercise as well. Spot on, Brett, absolutely. So what do the participants do? Um, it is the job of the sensei and the brain um, to actually engage people, you know? So uh, a lot of people wanna hide. You know, there is imposter syndrome. Everybody's afraid of being called out as a, as a fraud and all the rest of it. We all wanna think that we know the whole stack. None of us know the whole stack, you know? It's just impossible. So it's really important to, uh, as a sensei, you know, if Chris is wandering around the room and he's got six different dojos happening at the same time as sensei, to notice that dojo which isn't engaging people and to come in and try to engage them and you know be able to say oh brett what do you think about this are you confused about it are you understanding it you know and getting everybody to talk what they're thinking um so again that very much looks like um you know these people in the corners who are saying what if we tried this you know there's going to be that person who's okay with throwing out bad ideas some people are just going to be um thinking to themselves, oh, I see two different ways of doing this, I don't wanna look stupid, so it's about asking that person, um, hey, what do you think? You know, there's no wrong answers here, we're just trying to figure it out. You'll obviously have the smug person who feels they know everything and stuff like that, so again, as sensei, you come in and you're less concerned with how to solve the problem, that's the job of the brain, and maybe more concerned with the person who's trying to dominate the conversation and tell you how the world should work, when we all know there's different ways to, to build these, these applications. Any questions in terms of roles before I go on to setup, which we've covered a little bit? Makes all sense, it's pretty easy, isn't it? I mean, the, do the dojo metaphor is a nice one. And again, you don't have to stick to it. What's really important is that you're setting problems and people are setting problems rather than telling them how to do things, you're letting them find the way to do things. So who knows, science works, right? Pedagogy, the educational psychologists doing all these surveys, you know, might actually have something. Um, so again, this is the in parallel instruction format. So again, this is, a, this is why it, it's valuable, is because this would never work unless you could do it in parallel. So obviously there's still prep to do, so uh, Chris's sensei would you know, maybe do the intermediate one, the advanced, the expert, um, and that's what would be nice about sharing all the challenges, so that as we dump these onto a GitHub repo, and we have the different challenges and you have a nice little paper instruction sheet, you can just go lay it down or write it up on the board and all the rest of it. So it makes all of our jobs easier, right? None of us want to recreate. Yeah, we might want to create our own slides and tell our view of the world, you know, here's the dream host version of the way we want you guys to do stuff. But that's great, you know, there's no reason why Bruno then can't take it and develop it for Internap and change it just a little bit so it works with the SDK that he's working with. So. Um, and, and then you can add your own, your own branding and all the rest of it. So that, that's why I'm hoping this will be a good community for allowing all the companies to participate because we all have training programs. We all have consultants who are gonna have to go in and actually train, um, whether it's in, inside the company or um, the, the, comp the, the groups that we're hiring. Yes, please, yeah, ask a question. Back to this, going back to the, this setup, right? So uh, we when we started to do this setup because they had to run all this application and do all the testing. So we need to have a 
opens that cloud environment, right? So is that going to be doing online or have this local setup here? Fantastic point in question. Um, so actually, uh, one of the things I, I will actively do is you can come to me, and I've already chatted with um, Bruno and Stefano, and we've just had chats with Rackspace. Um, they'll provide clouds because they want to provide their cloud because they want to give out free accounts, and they want the people to come back and use their clouds. Um, you could use DevStack if you want, but I would really recommend one of the coolest things is is um, if you decide to run one of these big training things, so say you're a local ambassador, right? We've already had this case. University of Texas, San Antonio, they want to run one of these things, and I want all the clouds there. I want, you know, one table to be Internap. I want one to be Rackspace. I want one to be DreamHost. I want one to be Inwind Stack, so forth and so on. So that allows those clouds to run and for those people to put forward their challenges and bring their changes. Does that make sense? Are we also considering, like, I mean, inviting different vendors to set up locally? For example, Mirantis, they have a training, they have a good training, so we can get Mirantis set up here, or different provide other other uh, uh, Ubuntu or Canonical, Canonical Suze to set up a local environment here. Is that an option? Absolutely, anything you're comfortable with. You know, I mean, there's also DevStack uh, that you can install, and and that's the other nice thing about this because you only need one computer to get a group of people working together, and that's actually what you don't want. You don't want everybody on their computers. You want just one computer and one screen with everybody paying attention and using these computers up here to interface in, in parallel. There's no reason why you couldn't use TriStack, you know, if you're running into a, a problem. Or, again, the coolest thing about OpenStack, right, is that we can bring all the vendors and the communities in. So, you know, take advantage of the sponsorship and, and bring people in, whether it's a local ambassador or whether it's a company event and you want everybody to start using that cloud. Um, it's a great way to get people going on that space. So whatever is your technical setup of preference, absolutely, absolutely. So the other thing which uh, I should mention in the, in the macro context is that this community will be really important for the hackathons we're running. So you, yesterday you guys would have seen the keynote and um, the hackathon we ran in Taiwan. Uh, we actually ran training as, as well, pre-training to the hackathon. And everybody always thinks that the hackathon is about the prizes and who we've got and all the rest of it. It's fun and it's a cool weekend, but I've never seen a hackathon go on to be a big startup company or something like that, right? You know, uh, the, all, all those rumors of Twitter starting as an internal hackathon, sure, but it's because they had been around as a company for a long time and they knew how to work. So the prizes are cool, the hack stuff is great, and we'll continue to bring the winners, but my real value and objective of the hackathon is all the pre-training we'll do in setup to that. So uh, we're already setting up uh, pre-training for the Guadalajara hackathon in September, where basically every Wednesday for a month leading up to the event, every Wednesday night, we'll set up in a bar and people will be able to come along and welcome, welcome, yeah, come on up. Um, people will be able to come along and uh, learn this stuff so that it's not just about one person winning a prize for the hackathon, it's actually about everybody walking away with training skills. And that's the real value of the hackathons that the um, foundation will continue to support and run. Okay, so we are gonna participate here. It would be bad form for me to be talking at you the entire time and not actually get you to participate. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little challenge actually of ourselves um, trying to build one of these challenges. And look, there's no right way and you, we definitely have to go away and think about it. Um, but we are gonna use the little format ourselves to basically write a challenge here. Uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll run a, a, a dummy dojo, if you will. Um, the thing we'll be doing essentially, uh, like I said, there's, there's a lot of good precedents for writing a good challenge and I would highly recommend check out Perl communities and the Ruby, Ruby community, community. You can Google for Bowling Game Kata. Um, there's some really good ones that I've highlighted uh, called the Bowling Game Kata, the Web Authentication Kata, and the Ruby uh, Countdown Quiz stuff. Um, so check those out if, you, if you're not sure what a good one looks like. There's plenty of examples on the web. Um, these are little tips that I would suggest, though there is no you know, hard, fast form for, for writing a challenge. Uh, try to make it a real world scenario. People deal a lot better if you role play with them a little bit. And I'm, you know, I'm gonna say, Bruno, you're the usability person, and uh, you know, um, Yi, you're the, you're, you're the uh, DevOps, um, and Bruno's gonna be app dev number one, and you know, Chris is gonna be app dev number two. And then that, that kind of gets them into a place where it's not them being represented at the table, they're just taking on a persona. So it allows them to not feel like an imposter. Um, 
have the people declare their role and what they're doing. So, uh, you know, get them to talk about that. We'll show that in a second. Provide a couple of different challenges. So do a really, really easy one. Do a novice one that everybody's going to be able to solve so they get a quick win. Uh, then you can scale it up after the easy one. Don't be afraid to create constraints, you know, like time constraints or it has to have this feature. Uh, and then last but not least, um, make sure that they always review what they learn. So once they've solved the challenge, get them to reflect on it. Because by reflecting, it actually embeds it in the brain because it recalls it from the memory part of the brain, the hippocampus, back into the prefrontal cortex, associates a tag with it, and then stores it back into the, the memory part of the brain. So um, really important in that sense. So let's, try, let's have a go at creating an example challenge. So I'm going to set people up in, into roles. I'm going to play the sensei part. Uh, it, everyone's, yeah, this is where you're like, oh, crap, right? <laughs> what, did I, what did I get pulled into? Um, so is uh, Bruno, do you want to uh, come and be the hands? Yep, come sit here. Uh, and Chris, do you mind if I ask you to be the brain? No problem, but I'll do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, so we'll have to get out of there. This is, this is also where you'll get really angry at people's keyboards because, uh, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not Dvorak at least, you know. <laughs> I haven't put you in there. But um, first things first, let, let me uh, just get you set up to where we're, what we're going to do. So um, I've created a GitHub repository. So let me take you there. Bingo. You don't have to, yeah, you don't have to be the genius, right? You know, this is, this is about actually asking people. It's, it's quite nice to be in the brain position because what you can do is just ask the questions you're thinking and not, and not worry too much about it. Um, so here's the repo. And so what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll assign some roles. So I've already assigned my, my hands and here's my brain. So almost you could say, Let, well, Chris, you're the, you're, the, you're the product manager, right? You're the, you're the one, yeah. <laughs> don't do that. Don't make me in that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, and Bruno, you're. You, let's say you're the intern. You know, you're. You're just learning this for the first time. Um, Stefano, let's make you um, the overall boss. You are the CEO, and you really care about this because you're rolling out training for everybody. Uh, and everybody else, pick the role you will. So, so Brett, what role would you like in the company? IT infrastructure manager, excellent. Uh, anyone else want to declare a role before we get going? Just think of yourself as a company. So the scenario I'm putting you all in is um, we're trying to create training, right? So um, let's pick, a, we'll pick a, 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 a silly company. The company's called CloudFoo. And uh, CloudFoo, you guys are all trying to agree the training you want to provide uh, in one of these dojos. So you've got a new cloud set up and you want to get people using that cloud. Um, so this will obviously, this maps to DreamHost and what Internet potentially you're trying to do here. Um, and Chris, what you're trying to get them to do is to just agree how to do these trainings. So very much your instructions are to get a novice challenge up and going, to get an intermediate challenge and an advanced challenge. So again, I'll, s I'll switch back to some of these slides and show you my instructions as the sensei I'm providing. And then, you know, obviously if this, the instructions don't make sense, you as the trainer get a, you get a, as the brain, you get a complaint about that and say, I don't understand sensei, so tell me how to do this. Let me, let me pull up the instructions and then we'll go from there. So Chris, I will actually, let me get another mic because this will make it a little bit easier. Do you have this mic as well, guys? Guys, can you turn on this one? Thank you. Okay. So, the instructions are here. Um, can you see those, Chris? Do those make sense? So, Chris, I'm going to back out, literally. I'm going to start to disappear as the sensei. I'm going to go off to the other training. Uh, and what I want you to do, and of course, you're welcome to ask me questions, but just walk people through the group and, you know, obviously don't take it too serious. So it looks like uh, we want to start by going to my, the first app training guide, right? Or do, we, do I assume everyone has seen the first app training thing? I'm wondering. Has, who has seen the first app training there guide? There we go. Now you've shifted into it. Ah, three of us have. Four. Okay. Um, well, I think that's enough for us to proceed, and now we need to um, we need to come up with a scenario for us to solve. And I think maybe the brain comes up with a scenario for us to solve, right? 
Yeah, so the scenario, the scenario you're in, like I said, is you want to teach people uh, how to use your cloud. So what's, what's the first thing? In fact, what, it, look, what I'd really recommend is go ahead and have a look at the first app cloud. Let's, everybody should have a quick look at that. So if you click that link, <laughs> here goes the joys of everybody's computer. So maybe start with the simple first one. And just have a look at what's in getting started. <laughs> well, and maybe could I take a quick minute for, uh, for our team and, and uh, see what you guys think would be a good way to introduce someone to the cloud, a good place to start. Um, at this point, would it, do you think you agree it would be to start with the build your first app on LibCloud? Or maybe, or maybe we should ask, I mean, what kind of languages you prefer to use, right? Because every developer has their own languages, right? Some people use Java, some people using Python or Ruby. And yeah, different languages have different SDK then. I agree. I think that the, uh, I, I think that if we structure questions in a more generic way, then we'll see what creativity people have, like the Haskell, the Go, or PHP, or Perl. Perl. Yeah, why not? Perl 6 is a thing. I don't believe you. Um, so go back to the instructions. Let's have a look at, let's have, look at the problem statement again. And this is where the instructions always come in handy, because you can just point people back to, to where you want them to go and what you wanted to do. So. Um, the, the scenario I've set up, and I'm going to skip ahead a little bit because we don't have a ton of time and the computer is going to break any minute. Um, I'm going to show you kind of what I created in this space just to kind of give you an idea. I mean, we've set up the basic scenario here, and obviously um, it's easy enough to just kind of to move on with it. But if we go back to, I will show you the one I created, and you will get the general idea. Because obviously one of the things you do as sensei here is you give them a little bit more time to actually get acquainted with this and understand what's going on with it. So the problem scenario I have is something like this. So the novice challenge would be deploy on a small image with a problem IP. I want you to write uh, and test showing the app is live and that this app needs to be done in five minutes. So really simple thing to be able to pull up shade. I don't know, coincidentally, we don't have the, the cloud set up right now for this, and I'm not going to push people through this. But that's the kind of low level thing that we would get people going inside of it. Obviously, you'd spend a little bit more time working through this. Um, and the main point of all of this is that we actually start to share these things. So I've actually, like I said, I've set up the additional GitHub repo so people can start to go to it and actually add in the challenges they'd want to add. So there's a basic challenge of, you know, how to add, oh, sorry, let me go to the template. And all you're doing in there is just putting in those three things. And then that way you, you have a basic instruction to lay down. In fact, Bruno, do you have your instructions? Right. Can we pull those out? Thank you. That's very yeah. helpful. Sorry, Chris. It's <laughs> I, mean, I just wanted to I wanted to get the roles and the setup so everybody could see what it looks like and how and how it gets going. Which language do you want? Ooh, yeah. Let's look at shade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. So at this stage, the other key thing that you would do is as we switch challenges, is we'd actually switch out people. So everybody in the group would actually have to touch the keyboard um, at some stage. So the, at this stage, I'd probably switch out brains. Maybe you keep brains, but I'd say, okay, Stefano's now got to sit uh, and work their way through. So, um, and this is a really good example. Uh, what we'll do is, because uh, this session, uh, I'm not intending it to go for, for too much longer, but we could have a go with playing around with this. I, I don't want it, I, we don't need to get it recorded from anywhere here on out. But it would be good for us to just kind of work on this if anybody has some extra time. I don't want to take up too much time because I know we all need to get back to container track. Um, and obviously, I'll put this online so people could see it as well. Sure. Yeah. Yep. I, I, last but not least, let me just show you the last couple of things. 
And actually, you, you did bring up a question, too. I, I've noticed you haven't mentioned Docker at all in this. Where does Docker fit in? <laughs> well, and so Docker, we, you know, so we allow the Docker, you know, the people who really love Docker, they can create their own challenges inside of this and, you know, solve the daemon problem and, and all the rest of it. Um, So, yep, and this is the, just to, to end it all off properly. Um, so obviously the next steps are the hackathon working group to be announced via the user committee mailing list. So we'll start to put quizzes up, um, probably via the dev mailing list on a regular basis and start getting people working on those. I've already got a couple of people who've suggested uh, cool quizzes that we could post online and start testing those. Uh, and then the other part, like I said, is training will be a big part of hackathon working group. So today, uh, at 3.30, if anybody wants to come and join the hackathon working group, that's where we'll start to, if you want to plan a hackathon, this is the place to come. And we've actually got four of them already queued up since the keynote tomorrow. <laughs> they're never going to end. They're, they're never going to end, Stefano. So can you, I, I just don't understand how. Ooh, ask the question to the mics. Totally have it. Yeah. yeah, so I, I'm not sure I understand how we're going to be, I mean, how this comes into the picture. The instructions? Yeah. Yep. So again, to run through, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me let me make the scenario obvious. So um, Bruno, have another seat as as the hands. So what I would do is, Sensei, is I would actually come up and I would say, so yeah. So let's 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 switch it out. Chris, you come and take the hands position. Uh, so you're you're sitting here. And again, this is just good 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 people. Uh, Stefano, you're now the product manager. You're the one who's actually going to run through the instructions. So you could almost treat this like a um, a guide. So you now, as brain, would stand up and say, "Okay, here is my instructions. Here's my specification." Okay. And these are the types of things that we'll actually start to add into the code repository. So you can just take this thing, print it up, hand it to the brain, and now you can just run the session. So you're essentially de you're, you're delegating your your teaching to the person who runs it. So you've now got the instructions, and you can just go ahead and work your way through this. So I tell him, okay, let's create the your cloud YAML configuration file, um, and it needs to be done with the clouds, top class. I mean, and then internet and branch and profile, you specify internet. Thank yep, you. Chris, <laughs> thank you, Chris. Yep, so that's, that's really as easy as it gets. The nice bit is, is Stefano, what you'd also be doing is asking questions. Is there other ways that people would wanna do this? Is this making sense? Getting everybody to participate. And if it's as obvious and instructional as this is a novice, just keep moving people in and out of the thing so the whole group actually gets an effort to try to be able to do this coding stuff. So, so all this instruction will be very language specific, right? Yes, and that's the other point is that we're gonna have a lot of different SDKs, a lot of different languages, a lot of different container paradigm or API paradigm or SDK paradigm. So we wanna be able to have a bunch of these and eventually we'll get really great senseis who can actually and mostly these are going to be people who are paid at companies to be trainers. And so they'll have this big, nice repository so they can walk into a room and they can train six or seven people all at the same time. The other nice bit is you don't have to be the expert. There's between the lot of us, we'll be able to figure this out. You don't need to come in and be like, oh, I understand all of this. So again, like that Sunday school paradigm, let's lower the bar and actually allow app dev to not get lost when we're trying to pull them into our ways of what's the API, what's the SDK. Just one, one question, so I'm, I'm a bit puzzling here. So are you trying to aim to create such training sessions in the next summit? Or yeah. Okay, so That's in the next correct. Barcelona summit, you're gonna set up all this. That's exactly why we're recording this. Okay. Is so that everybody, when they come next summit, and we're like, okay, we really wanna have these app dev training rooms up and going, okay. people will know what they're coming to. This is, you know, this will be the setup, you know, times five or six or seven okay. based on that. And then that way people can come and sit down and this will just start to become a regular way of doing training and learning. Okay, so on top of that, so speaking on, speaking on that, right, so are we also targeting on a specific language? Because every instruction, right, let's say for the personal summit, are we just aiming for Python? Or are we looking at also aiming to Java or .NET? Because if we're aiming for other languages, right, we need to make sure the, the instructions or SDK is ready for them to use, right? Yep. It's mature enough for them to And use. look, I think we could do it a lot of different ways. You know, if, um, DreamHost has got a lot of customers who want to do Python. Well, they're probably going to do uh, Shade and you know LibCloud, and they'll do a couple. They'll do a beginner Shade, an, a novice Shade, an intermediate Shade, and then LibCloud will be a little bit different. So, 
this allows for people to actually specify the communities they want to target. So it's not us dictating this is the way it should work. It's about who are the customers you have, who do you want to actually work with. So you can take the training you developed with a with a customer around Shade and say, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna run Shade training because that's what works for us and that's what we're doing with customers. And people will show up to it. They really will. Three thousand people showed up to this training here, and it was just very quickly thrown together. I would, I would expect, um, or maybe have a, a little bit of a different viewpoint on that. And, and um, if, if you're doing novice sessions, um, then the assumption is that you know, maybe they're novice developers, maybe they're novice in OpenStack, maybe they're novice in both. Um, but regardless, I think the, the introductory platform there is really irrelevant from, from a language perspective. It should be agnostic, right? And, and this is a great example of that, right? Um, the, these, these instructions are very straightforward. Once you start getting into um, intermediate or um, expert type sessions, um, then again, I think the language is irrelevant mainly because you should have developers in there that are skilled enough to be flexible in their language of choice. Yep. And I'd look, look I'd, I'd, I personally, if, if I worked on anything, and again, it'll be personal preference, I would like to work more on just using um, you know, the curl client and doing basic API, like especially with the OP, open API working group stuff, I think there could be a whole cool set of little lessons just built around, let's, university students coming fresh out of uni compute comp sci, teaching them curl <laughs> and understanding how to call the different sources and what resources each one of those, Nova, Glance, Ironic, all provide, that in itself, like it, the hackathon in Taipei, that's what they were using, right? It was that simple. They just wanted to do the straight up API, uh, the straight up API calls. But we will. We'll want more advanced ones, and I really, really want a feature rich Python client as well, right? Which we all agree on is the Python client that we all want to use, the, the the Python SDK client for this kind of stuff. Yi, did you have another question? No. Any last questions before we uh, finish it all off? And guys, thank you so much for coming along. I know this is very novice. Like I said, I promise you I'll be dedicating a lot of my time to this. If there are any questions, I should get out of the screen's way, uh, contact me uh, on flanders at openstack.org. Uh, IRC and Twitter is both DFF Flanders, um, so hit me up there. Stefano? That's a good question. Where do you think we should put those? That's a really, because I, I, I've actually been wondering that myself, because normally like Perl and Ruby, They'll just throw it out on the general um, sort of dev list, but I feel like our general dev is a bit more question and answer focused, which could be good, right? You know, people who throw up their generic questions, maybe just throwing out challenges every now and again would be a, a fun way to engage people. I, I would only recommend that we provide some preliminary guidance to our broader OpenStack development community um, because, frankly, the the dev list is very, very expert and focused on OpenStack. Yep. And I will argue strongly that the dev list does not know anything about OpenStack users, and in fact is hostile and angry at OpenStack users. Yeah. So, so where would I, you recommend, maybe a separate list, or what, what are you thinking? I hate to say it, but we might need a separate list and just start driving people there. Yeah, None okay. of us want more lists, but at the same time, I, I'm on all of the lists, and I can't think of any that is really would be a good place and welcoming place and um, yeah just so to add on to that um, and in this I'm I'm fairly I won't say I'm fairly new to OpenStack I've been kind of in the in the community for a while but not heavily engaged um, but you know I'm still coming to terms with drawing the distinction between developing for OpenStack right working on the actual components um, working on applications that kind of monitor, manage, maintain OpenStack, right? Or then this kind of what I'm thinking this app dev thing is, is really using OpenStack more as like an OS to run your applications, right? Um, so I think those are separate communities, right? So definitely there's, there's value in, in, in separating those gaps. And by the way, you actually have till 1230 in this session. Yeah, no, I just didn't want to hold up everybody because like I said, <laughs> the session needed to be recorded um, I have no, no desire to push us into a long session without actual code and demos <laughs> involved in it. I'm wondering whether it would make sense to, instead of using a mailing list, to use a website? Like and Ruby does that. Pages. So Ruby Post has just a blog and they post regular challenges and then you post the link out and then what they do is people reply to a special 
mailing list and then they publish people's solutions to the way that they've done that. So, yep, any feedback on the or way we both. should do this? I like both those ideas, yep. Or both, like you push the challenge on the blog or ask OpenStack and then... That's not a bad idea, ask OpenStack. If we could figure out a way to actually make it part of that, because then people could vote up the solutions up and down, so it might be a nice way to drive more info Traffic. to op ask OpenStack. Yeah. This is why we get the brain trust together. Yes, yeah. this is why people work in groups. <laughs> you come up with solutions. I like it. Yeah, yeah. I'll do that. I'll totally take that forward. Um, cool. Okay, any last comments? Thank you all again for coming along. I think this is a, the start of a beautiful thing. It's a nice, it's, a, it's the glimmer in the eye of a, a new community that, um, well, I know we, all of us have talked about it and we really wanna see application developers and our users be uh, more, more um, informed in this space. So thanks again and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you around the conference venue. Thanks guys, cheers, bye. Thank you.